Splatoon 2 is just around the corner now and I've spent the weekend playing through the single player portion of the game. That means we can finally answer some of the questions posed by eager fans. Is it a real upgrade over the original Wii U game visually? What resolution does it actually run at? Let's dive in and find out. First, a quick refresher. Back when the Switch was properly revealed this past January, Splatoon 2 was one of the very first games I played on the new system. And this was captured from an early build of the game running at a native 720p, just like on Wii U. For a brand new console, there was certainly some disappointment surrounding the low resolution of the game, and many of us held out hope that things would improve by the time it shipped. During Nintendo's E3 stream then, it was mentioned by one of the Treehouse members that the game is 1080p at 60 frames per second. So, so we are running the game, 60 FPS, 1080p. Hisashi Nogami, the game's producer, responded. That's correct. You've done your research, I see. <laughs> yeah. Only the translated response wasn't actually a translation at all. What Nogami actually said was basically, yes, the game runs at 60 frames at a maximum resolution of 1080p, implying that the maximum possible resolution was 1080p. And that is precisely the reality. You see, Splatoon 2 operates with an adaptive resolution feature. That means it can go all the way up to 1080p in select instances, or drop down to lower resolutions like 1536 by 864 as well as other in-between resolutions like 936p. Essentially, while playing, the resolution is adjusting on a near-constant basis to maintain its target frame rate. And how about portable mode then? Well, this too uses an adaptive resolution that seems to bounce back and forth between the native 720p of the screen and 1152 by 648. But hold on, while that may seem disappointing at first, the reality is that this is still a significant improvement over the original game on Wii U. During gameplay in docked mode, for instance, the game spends a lot of time at 864p, which is just shy of 900p, but can also jump higher during some of the less complex scenes. In general, though, it's always above the 1280 by 720 that we saw on Wii U, which is a huge improvement. One thing that hasn't changed though is the lack of anti-aliasing during gameplay, which does tend to exaggerate jagged edges, but still, as I said, it's a big improvement over the original game. Interestingly, the hub area, which runs at half the frame rate, sees a huge boost in image quality with a native 1080p output at all times, coupled with some very decent anti-aliasing. The difference between normal gameplay and the hub basically demonstrates the price of 60 frames per second here. You can test the dynamic resolution feature for yourself right from the very first screen of the game. If you point the camera upwards, the resolution jumps straight up to 1080p, but when you look back down, it's 864p instead. And that's kind of what you're going to see throughout most of the game. Now on handheld, it's a lot less distracting since the screen is small enough. 648p is certainly visible if you look closely, but it really doesn't have a huge impact on visual quality and the game looks awesome on the handheld. But there's a lot more going on here than just a simple resolution upgrade. Splatoon 2 is a more refined looking game overall with improvements to detail all throughout. Let's start with character models, which are now more detailed all around. Look at Sheldon here in the shop for instance. Many details are improved here such as his goggles, which are much more rounded on the Switch. The same is true with just about every character model in fact, and it ends up looking a lot nicer overall. The environments too are more detailed, especially in the texture department. Surfaces are sharper and more refined as a result of the higher quality textures, and the hub especially sees a massive jump over the original game. Another key improvement here can be found in the shadows. The Wii U version bakes many of its shadows into the environment, which do not cast onto the player model. The real-time shadows then are often very low resolution and rather ugly. You can see that even the trees lack any sort of proper shadows on Wii U. Over on the Switch though, many more objects feature proper shadows that do properly cast across the environment and player models alike. While the resolution of these shadows is still relatively low, it does feel like a pretty nice step up from the Wii U version. Even the paint effect sees a nice bump in quality over the original Wii U game. Compared to the Switch version here, what do you guys think? On Switch, there's a nice subtle sparkly effect applied to the surface, in addition to more defined edges. It looks thicker and goopier, I think, than the Wii U version. And the way the different paint colors interact with one another as they splat into each other, I think looks better as well. 
Ultimately, this is a case where, on the surface, the two games do look rather similar, but if you look closer, it becomes clear that Splatoon 2 is a nice jump up from the original overall. A better resolution and more detailed visuals are yours. Of course, all of this would be for naught if the frame rate were unstable or inconsistent, right? But this is Nintendo we're talking about here. There's no other publisher that takes frame rate stability this seriously. So it should come as no surprise then that Splatoon 2 targets 60 frames per second and hits that target 100% of the time. Seriously, in all of my sessions thus far, Splatoon 2 has yet to even drop one single frame. Not one, it's completely solid at all times. Now, is it possible to drop the frame rate? Well, maybe. We'll just have to wait until the online mode is opened up to be sure, but based on single player alone, I wouldn't worry too much. Of course, if we jump over to the hub, that still runs at 30 frames per second, just like the original Wii U game, which is a little bit jarring coming from the smooth gameplay, but hey, it works well enough. Still, the main game is 60 frames per second, and that's what matters. Between Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, ARMS, Splatoon 2, and various other less demanding games, the Switch is quickly becoming all about that 60 FPS lifestyle. It really is all about balance then. Yes, the game can be a little rough in terms of image quality at times, but in the end, image quality was sacrificed in favor of flawless performance, which I think is key to longevity in helping to create something that feels truly special. It also bodes extremely well for future games in the system. Thus far, Mario Odyssey has been presented exclusively at 720p, for instance, just like the older demos for Splatoon 2. With the huge improvement we've seen to image quality here in the final game, I think it's fair to say that by release, we could be looking at a similar situation with Mario Odyssey. In the end, Splatoon 2 is another feather in Nintendo's cap. Its track record on the Switch has been virtually spotless. Zelda is the one game which exhibits slowdown on the Switch, but it's also one of the most ambitious games Nintendo has ever made. Everything else though, a solid 60 frames per second. And that applies to more than just Nintendo's developed games. Think about that for a second. Just glancing over the North American eShop, there are 71 titles available for Nintendo Switch. Now, a lot of these are simply emulated classics, of course, but if you look through the entirety of the list of that 71 games, more than 80% of those on the list are 60 frames per second. And while that does include some of those pretty basic titles and emulated classics, it's still a pretty amazing number if you think about it. That's a lot of 60 frames per second. Okay, but that's really about all we have for today. Once the game goes live and we're able to share more on its multiplayer mode, perhaps we'll return to it, but for now, know that Splatoon 2 has turned out really nice on the Switch and gives us hope for future games receiving a resolution upgrade like Mario Odyssey. If you enjoyed this video though, be sure to give us a like, subscribe, and follow us on Twitter. And until next time, this is John signing off.